for joining us today for Cooperative Identity and Branding, Does the Co-op Brand Attract People? It's January 22nd, 2014. This is our first of our series for this winter 2014 series with the Measuring the Co-op Difference Research Network. We're very fortunate to have three uh, featured speakers today, and right now you're hearing the voice of myself, the moderator, Aaron Hancock, out of Ottawa at the Canadian Cooperative Association and Cooperatives and Mutual of Canada. So our, our research network is really pleased to present this because we know that branding really matters to folks, especially because we've, we've seen our stats in terms of how many people registered for our last uh, branding webinar and for this one as well. And we know that it's something that, uh, above even other topics in the co-op discussion, really matters to folks. So our, our three uh, speakers today really tackle quite a broad perspective on co-op branding. So first, we have Sean Wellens from Calverts in the UK. And they're the graphic design co-op firm um, behind the new International Cooperative Alliance identity that you've probably seen. And Sean was instrumental in engaging a worldwide survey of cooperators to inform this new branding. He'll provide highlights from the survey that unpack these ideas of co-op branding. Then we have Gerard Perron, uh, who will speak about certification of compliance with the cooperative practices. So this is a program developed out of Quebec, Canada, as a way of certifying co-ops that they abide by the internationally accepted co-op principles. So this is another way to look at brand and identity. Uh, so he'll explain why the certification was developed, how it works, why it was helpful as a branding mechanism, and why it's not yet been implemented. And then we'll end by having Tom Webb, who will respond uh, to the first two presentations and provide a bit of a reflection on how co-op branding and identity can serve as a marketing advantage and how this can be done. And he'll give us some examples as well. So thanks so much to our three speakers for being here today uh, to lead us through this very popular webinar. So just to give you a bit of background on the network who's hosting, so the Measuring the Co-op Difference Research Network is a pan-Canadian multidisciplinary research network. Um, we're hosted uh, here at the Canadian Cooperative Association, and you may have learned that we're changing our identity a bit to become Cooperatives and Mutual of Canada, focusing on our domestic agenda. And, uh, and our research network is funded by the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada uh, over a period of uh, 2010 to 2015. And, and within that, we've got about 15 active projects that examine different aspects of the co-op difference, uh, all social, environmental, and economic impacts. And each year, we host six free webinars where we invite members of the public. Today we've got a real mix of folks from co-op organizations as well as universities and governments. And, uh, and we know there are lots of students attending as well. Um, and so we offer these uh, to folks to engage in this dialogue, to learn from some of the people that are doing some pretty neat research, and to really advance uh, how it is that we work as co-op businesses. So we also want your suggestions. You'll get a very short survey following this webinar. So if you are doing research or activities you think that um, you'd like to share with folks through this avenue, um, or you have ideas of who is, then definitely let us know. And also you can visit our website as well. So we do have one other webinar already set up in this winter series. It's called Education for Cooperation, How Do We Educate Cooperators, which we know is also another hot topic. So our featured speakers for that are Karen Miner from St. Mary's University from the Co-op Management Education Program, uh, Christina Clamp from Southern New Hampshire University, and myself, Erin Hancock. I'm the Manager of Research and Education with the uh, Canadian Cooperative Association and Cooperatives and Mutual of Canada. We also have materials from our past uh, webinars, even from last fall, our last Co-op Identity and Branding uh, webinar. The video and materials are now up on the website at cooperativedifference.coop, as well as the previous one on ethnocultural cooperatives, race, society, and cooperative emergence. So lots of great materials there. Help yourself. Uh, and now I get to move on to introducing our three featured speakers for today. We're kicking off things with Sean Wellens. He's been a worker cooperator for 30 years. He's the client services director at a UK design and production co-op named Calverts, which has been gaining popularity, of course, uh, through their work with the ICA and the, and the recent development of the MARC. Um, he's also a member of the UK Worker Cooperative Council, a trustee of Industrial Common Ownership Finance, 
and a member of Principle 6, which is a Cooperative Advocacy and Business Advice Partnership. Uh, Sean served on the board of Cooperatives UK from 2006 to 2011. Uh, and following Sean, we've got Gerard Perrin. He's held management positions since 1977. His expertise is recognized in economic development, local and co-op development, as well as in organizational development, everything from corporate governance to project management. He's the author of a book on participative uh, management and on another on cooperative management. He regularly provides training and coaching in management, so leadership, communication, participatory management, corporate governance, project man management, and so forth. So he is, uh, he is a well-known author and educator as well. And, uh, and to complete things with us today, before we move into our discussion period, is Tom Webb. And many of you know Tom Webb, um, of course, from his work uh, working in cooperative management education at St. Mary's University at Halifax, Nova Scotia. He's been a co-op practitioner and educator for many decades and as well has worked in corporate communications in the co-op sector. So, uh, so I, I doubt that these names are new to many of you, but I think it will be interesting to hear them all together today on this topic. So now I want to shift things over to Sean. Sean, if you want to unmute yourself, I'll have you share your screen now and get us kicked off. Okay. Thank you very much, Erin. And thank you very much, everybody, and it's great to be with you. Um, I'm going to give you a bit of a run-through of the process of developing the brief we received from the International Cooperative Alliance to develop a new identity mark uh, which can be used by any cooperative enterprise anywhere in the world to align with uh, the global movement as a social business brand. Um, the International Cooperative Alliance, this is part of a strand of work um, around cooperative identity that the, co the International Cooperative Alliance um, has, has uh, put forward as part of its work around what it calls the blueprint for a cooperative decade, um, which is a very, very ambitious um, program of work that the ICA has set itself and for all of us uh, for the coming years around the idea that um, uh, within the next, within the end of a period of time, you know, perhaps 2020, the aim is to, um, to have that cooperation will become the most uh, recognized around the world as the most sustainable form of enterprise. And that therefore it will be the enterprise model that is preferred by people. And because of that, it will be the fastest growing business sector in the world. Um, and uh, that's a very ambitious goal. And the five pillars of, uh, or the five strands of work, or the five pillars of, of the uh, blueprint, are around um, cooperatives and participation, um, cooperatives and sustainability, um, the legal framework for cooperatives globally and country by country, cooperative capital, uh, how cooperatives finance and build wealth and capital. And finally, cooperative identity. So our work on the global mark is very much in support of this uh, strand of work around identity. Um, so first of all, we, we um, received a brief um, which was around developing a mark, an identity mark, but also uh, integrating that with some key messages. So the, the International Cooperative Alliance has been working with a number of different partners, for instance, um, Somerson Group in Australia worked on some of the key messaging, uh, which which joined in with our work on the mark. Um, Sustainability Solutions Group um, has um, been working on some work around cooperatives and sustainability, trying to assess how we actually prove and show that cooperatives are the most sustainable form of enterprise. And that's a very interesting document they produced for the alliance. And I think Petronella Tyson from uh, from SSG is joining us today. So um, the first part of our work was to look at, it was, was the research phase of the work, um, and it was to look at uh, how cooperative, cooperative enterprises around the world already express themselves uh, using visual imagery and marks. Um, and this slide is just uh, shows some of the examples of the many, many hundreds, even thousands of marks that we looked at, with a view to see, seeing whether there was any one image or one, one a graphical representation of cooperation that could actually work across uh, boundary, all cultural boundaries and across frontiers. 
Um, and part of the brief originally was that was that it was felt that we couldn't use any words in a global mark because these would not translate. And you'll see that there's a story around this. Um, the second uh, aspect of it was a, a research among cooperators themselves, and it was the, the conclusion was that we really needed to ask cooperators around the world uh, about their feelings about cooperation, their views of cooperation, what the value of cooperation is to them. Um, to, to see what cooperators themselves have to say about cooperation. And of course, when we're asking, um, does the corp brand attract people, uh, the general public, um, cooperators there are, there are reckoned to be probably at least three quarters of a billion individual members of cooperatives around the world, and probably something approaching a billion memberships. And there are hundreds of thousands of, of diverse cooperative enterprises working all around the world in different sectors. So in some ways, the people that we're researching in terms of their, 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 their thoughts and beliefs and feelings and, and uh, about the cooperative movement cross over with our audiences. But however, we do know that, that, that people do not, people around the world, that cooperation is not as visible as it should be as a social business movement. Um, and um, this is part of what this project is designed to tackle. So we designed an open survey using, um, using a, a, you know, a freely available platform, uh, a 22 question survey asking cooperators how they see themselves, other cooperators, what they feel about the movement, and what words and images best capture the nature and meaning and purpose of cooperation. So these were some of the, this is the type, some of the type of open questions that we asked. And people poured their hearts out. I mean, we've given people response boxes, but people people gave us hundreds of words about stories around cooperation, um, and uh, a really, really very rich um, source of, of inspiration and knowledge about how people see this this uh, social business brand, as I call it. Some multiple choice questions. You know, how does being a cooperator make you feel? Please choose an answer you relate to. Cooperation has given me new opportunities. I feel connected to others. I make decisions that affect my future. My situation is more secure. I'm proud of, of being a cooperator, and it gives me a sense of belonging and other. And of course, people came up with all sorts of formulations for their feelings around cooperation. And what is the most important attribute of cooperatives as a global model? Is it that they're more ethical? Is it that they're for good times and bad? Are they more efficient? Are they more democratic? Do you think they're more successful? Do you think they're more sustainable? Do you think they engage more people? And then finally, some, uh, some picture questions, really looking for uh, responses to different levels of images and how they resonate with people in terms of representing the feeling of cooperation and the purposes of cooperation. Um, so this was, this was one around uh, the sense of connection through cooperation. And then finally, we had a, a, a question, do you think we should use the word co-op? to promote our worldwide identity, even though it is not used or understood everywhere. And uh, people have a lot to say around this question, because originally, as, as I've mentioned, our brief was that, that, that nothing involving a word could be the mark or could be involved in the mark. But in fact, uh, people came back very strongly and said that co-op is, is, is what we are, um, and it's, it's, the, it's the simplest way to express um, our, or our, our alignment with cooperative identity as a global force. Um, and to really cut a long story short, because I'm not talking about design, this was the evolved, developed um, cooperative mark in its simplest form. A really simple design. Um, it's been said that uh, a, a famous uh, design critic said that um, the, uh, the sign of a successful mark is if you can draw it with your toe in the sand. Um, so simplicity was really important because this needed to be a mark that people could use in very different circumstances where perhaps people don't have access to graphical technology so that people can copy it and use it uh, very simply. The, the linked O's symbolizing working together, strong symmetry and reflective shapes. And this is why people said we must use co-op. It's who we are. It expresses our purpose. It belongs to us. It doesn't belong to anybody else. Um, and the, very interestingly, the, um, the, the, the uh, response, that response came, we, we did the survey in three languages and we had responses from more than a thousand people, I think a thousand and sixty-eight people um, in more than sixty countries around the world. And um, the response was very, very strong from people uh, responding from all countries and all language groups. 
and interestingly that it wasn't felt that a mark based on the Latin letter form C-O-O-P uh, was some kind of um, graphical cultural imperialism on people who don't use uh, Latin alphabets themselves because uh, this is absolutely mainstream. So we, we managed to cut through um, quite a lot of, quite a lot of um, you know, cut through the brief to get to something really simple that people felt really represented us. Um, and I talked about how work was being done simultaneously on messages. So, but the International Cooperative Alliance had agreed in, as part of the international year in 2012 that it would use uh, Cooperative Enterprises Build a Better World as its um, headline slogan, if you like, for this work. Um, but we developed the mark in a number of different colors because we realized that, 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 that color has different meanings in different cultures, so it's been made available to people to use in different colors. It's been made available to people with a number of different alternative key messages which resonate with uh, the work of Summerson and, and the messaging work that was being done on the side. So um, you'll see down on the bottom left that cooperation approved and self-help model for good times and bad was a very strong reason why people, justification for people's alignment with cooperation as an idea. And this goes against what, what uh, uh, mainstream branding would tell you which is that we never use words like bad in communications, but in this case we did. You know, it's a model for good times and bad. It's about sustainability in terms of people's uh, own, own survival and their prosperity in this world. That people are together are stronger, that cooperatives are people-centered businesses driving social innovation, that, corp that the co-op mark is a sign that we're working together under a shared identity. Uh, cooperatives are about environmental concern, financial sustainability, social purpose and serve the needs of people. Um, and then essentially we, we propagated the mark which is free to use to uh, bona fide cooperatives anywhere in the world with a set of guidelines about how they should use it and some, some illustrations of some of the applications of the mark so that people can use this on packaging, promotion of merchandise, print communications, websites, email signatures, vehicle livery, screen presentations. There's nowhere it can't really be used. Um, so. Um, uh, website packaging, this is uh, an example of some fair trade work co-op uh, whole food wholesale packaging where, we've, where, where you can see we've used the, the co-op mark alongside fair trade mark on the bottom of this one on the left. And actually the fair trade mark was a, the, the fair trade mark we thought was the closest model to what we were trying to do, which is with limited resources, um, but over a period of time, trying to launch a mark, a meaningful high quality mark that comes to raise the level of recognition of cooperatives and also raise the level of understanding of cooperatives and what they are. Um, and, and the Fair Trade Foundation started this 20 years ago on a shoestring. Um, and now the Fair Trade Mark and, and its proposition, which is quite complex for the ordinary consumer on the street, namely a fair deal for third world producers, is now something that many, many ordinary people can know what this, this um, mark stands for. And what we're aiming for is, is that co-op um, achieves the same le level of recognition uh, in, in time. Um, an example of uh, using it on a shop front, on premises. The other uh, aspect, or the other push around identity was that we knew that we wanted the, the new mark to work very closely with .coop, which is uh, a very powerful, you know, it's our restricted top level domain name that only cooperatives can use, but, um, but take up has been you know, over, over the years that .coop has been around, uh, there's a chicken and egg over how cheap we can make it for people, for cooperators to use, and how many people are using it and paying the bill. So we're trying to join uh, the, the .coop domain and the new co-op mark together, and they're offered together via the identity.coop website. Um, so there's a very simple registration process for cooperators to come in, uh, prove that they're eligible, prove their eligibility for the mark, and then receive all the assets and the files and the signature images and the um, guidelines, and it doesn't cost anything. So, uh, so we talk about uh, cooperators securing their corporate identity using the mark as a visual identifier for cooperative enterprises everywhere, and dot co-op as the top-level global domain name for cooperative enterprises everywhere. So that essentially is, is my presentation. Um, my observations about brand is that, in fact, brand is a word that, um, in, 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 that the, the alliance doesn't actually use. We don't actually, we haven't actually used the word brand. 
I think brand is a useful concept because it's because brand is about people's experience uh, of um, a, of an enterprise in all its forms, its its nature, its identity, its products, the relationship people have with the brand. And we are talking about developing a new relationship around the idea of Coop as a global brand, as distinct from people's relationship with uh, particular co brands of particular co cooperative enterprises that they already know. So it's this idea of taking a cooperative brand to another level, um, to the level of a globally recognized force. Um, so that's, uh, that's um, my contribution. Uh, thank you very much and I look forward to any questions or observations you might have about this. Thanks very much, Sean. That's a great way to get us kicked off, especially because it's also fresh and it was such a thorough process in terms of getting to the mark that, that we're all becoming more and more familiar with. Um, so I'd like to shift now over to Gerard. Um, if you have questions for Sean specifically, make sure to uh, send them in the question box or in the chat box and we'll make sure that we can address those uh, towards the end once we've heard from the three presenters. So thanks, Sean. So Gerard, it's over to you. You can unmute yourself. I am coming. Is that okay for you? Oui, parfait. Parfait. So hello everybody. It's my pleasure to virtually uh, being with you today. Uh, thank you, Erin, for your introduction and uh, congratulations to Sean for uh, emphasizing the, the importance of, of strong, uh, a strong branding. My uh, presentation will go in, in the same way, and my goal is to, my goal is to present uh, how our certification branding uh, could be an interesting added value. And I, I'm jumping on the way uh, I will address this uh, presentation. Uh, here is the structure of my uh, of the presentation. Uh, certification of compliance with cooperative practices is a tool uh, developed by the regional uh, the regional Co development cooperative of Quebec Appalach uh, between 2000 and 2003 when I was a director general in this organization, and then the the tool was transferred to the Conseil Québécois de la coopération et de la mutualité our Quebec Apex organization for, its, uh, uh, for the implementation of the tool. And I'm beginning with uh, why evaluate uh, cooperative life. At the regional development cooperative of uh, Quebec Appalach, we were convinced uh, with Daniel Cote from HEC Montreal that uh, the most uh, performing co-ops are those where cooperative values and principles of the ICE are integrated in the day-to-day -day practices. In other words, uh, where the management practices integrate the co-op principles. So uh, from this deep conviction, the question was how to integrate cooperative values into management practices. And in addition, once we know the good management practices, how do we convince managers to adapt them? So our challenge was to develop an attractive and easy to use tool. To go deeper with the question, uh, why evaluate cooperative life? I am presenting some comments from uh, the pilot, pilot, pilot uh, project or participant. To better know co-op advantages, to get relevant information on stakes, to improve the sharing of information, to improve decision-making process, to work closer with stakeholders, to improve our processes. Now that we know why, how do we evaluate cooperative life? From my point of view, there are three degrees of evaluation. First, auto-evaluation, second, audit, and third, certification. Auto-evaluation does not allow external uh, visibility, but at least the board and the managers have a better self-knowledge. They understand their cooperative distinction. They have better knowledge of their members. And at least they understand that they are, not, they are, that they are other elements of distinction 
than the patronage allocation. With an external audit, the co-op can decide if it will publish or not the results. And the audit publication will have credibility if the audit person or organization is well acknowledged. Here the challenge is to find such an auditor. A certification of compliance has three advantages. The board has to commit itself in the process. The auditor is external and internationally accredited, and the certificate can be displayed. So rewarding the process and the effort. So why a certification tool? I recall that we had to convince the managers to use an evaluation tool. The certification offers an interesting reward by displaying the result of the effort. Like ISO, where the certificate is displayed. So the real added value is here in the visibility to the public and to the members. I'm presenting briefly the structure of the tool. For each seven core principles, the tool presents dimensions to evaluate, and each dimension has three degrees of requirements to reach, corresponding to the difficulty level. For the first degree, the crop has to collect the information. For the second degree, to make decisions, and at the third level, the co-op has to apply those decisions. So the first level is easy to attain, and the third is more challenging. Together, the three levels promote a continuous improvement. I will not explain here the seven core reserve, the seven core reserve principles. You probably know them. I will briefly uh, give an example of how it works with the fifth principle, education, training, and information. Here's the definition of the fifth, of the fifth principle. I will not read it. Uh, so for this principle, there are five dimensions assessed. Information, training, consultation, and mobilization of, of board members, information, training, consultation and mobilization of members, the same for employees, and for promotion of the, of the corporate form of business among young people, and the last promotion of the corporate form of business in general. So as stated below, before, uh, for each dimension, three level of, requir of requirement with a first easy but significant, where the information has to be collected about how to deal with the dimension. Depending on how the cooperative performs, it will receive a gold, silver, or bronze certification. The certification is delivered from the organization chosen by the cooperative movement to manage and deliver the certification. During the development process in 2003, we worked with an organization accredited by ISO for delivering international certification. The testimony from uh, pilot, from this uh, pilot project participant spoke by itself. I just, I now understand better what makes us different, which makes it easier to showcase. So the main certification added value are a good coverage of the seven principles. It stresses responsibility of the board. There is an external and accredited auditor, and it, prov it provides an external visibility. The ICA group blueprint uh, 2020 wants to improve the co-op identity and branding. Certification could be helpful by first putting the spotlight on the best co-ops and strengthening the whole movement when challenging hotter co-ops.
that why this tool developed in 2003 is not yet implemented. The Quebec region, the Regional Development Cooperative, developed the tool in 2003, and our studies proved the cooperative will to use the tool. Then the tool was transferred to the to the Quebec Apex organization, Conseil Québécois de la Coopération et de la Mutualité. Uh, and at this moment, some federations were not interested in a certification for mainly four reasons. Certification branding could lead to a public opinion that there are good and bad co-ops. Could lead to show that there are weak and strong co-ops within the same federation could lead to bad competition between co-ops, and could lead to control from government and banks. Because of this reluctance, the Quebec Apex organization modified the tool from a certification tool to an auto-evaluation tool. And as expected, with, without the certification reward, uh, the tool has rested on, on the shelf. Uh, also, ICA was interested in, but the organization had a lot of challenges and the project was not prioritized yet. In 2005, the ICA Board of Directors had this comment about the certification of compliance with the corporate principles, and I'm reading it. The board believes that having access to such a tool, which can validate and demonstrate the distinctiveness of cooperatives, in a consistent and measurable way throughout the world is something that may be a real value to ICA members. But as I said, for many reasons, the project was not prioritized. So in conclusion, certification tool exists with three levels of certification for continuous improvement. And it is developed for three sectors, consumers, workers, and producers. Uh, two out of four elements of the Blueprint 2020 are relevant for a certification tool. The first element, to elevate participation within membership and governance to a new level. And the third element of the Blueprint, to build the cooperative message and secure the cooperative identity. So it was a pleasure to address you. I'm available for questions and comments, and I thank you for your listening. I'm, I want to add that I'm also active on social media, so you, I'm blogging on those topics. So you can follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, or Facebook. But thank you for your listening. Merci, Gerard. That's great. I think it's really neat to have those two presentations uh, up against each other, too, because I think that both of them are tools that allow us to really put our co-op brand out there and also show the connection between all the different types of, of businesses, even though uh, from a consumer perspective, you know, buying different products, you wonder how it is they're all connected. It's kind of like the fair trade movement as well. So um, it, it's neat to look at having that brand versus having that certification to, to think, okay, now that I see this brand, I know exactly what it stands for. So that's, that's quite interesting. So Tom, Tom's next. So Tom, I'm going to give you um, the ability to share your screen now if you want to pull up your PowerPoint. And Sean and Gerard, I'll ask that you mute yourself. And uh, folks can go ahead and uh, submit the, their questions via the question, the question box and go to webinar. And uh, we'll make sure that we uh, kick off the discussion just after Tom with your questions. So Tom, take it away. Very good. Well, uh, welcome everybody to Nova Scotia. We're in the middle of a blizzard. It uh, costs up to 70 kilometers an hour, so wherever you are, you're likely better off, unless, of course, you're in Nova Scotia. Uh, at any rate, it's a nice day to be inside and, and talking in a webinar. So let me talk just very briefly about the co-op brand and its value. Uh, First of all, let me say that there have been a lot of surveys done about what people think about cooperatives around the world. And generally, the surveys tell us that people like cooperatives. They generally like them. They like them better than big business and government. Um, but they don't know a lot about them. 
and their understanding of the cooperative difference is quite shallow. So if you uh, put in this first slide uh, where we look at the co-op identity and a whole series of other logos, one of the things that struck me about this is there is uh, only one brand in that lot that has 100 million workers. And uh, that's the cooperative brand. Now, mind you, it's a lot of different co-ops. But uh, it is a single brand with 100 million workers. Uh, if you are a cooperative or credit union, whether you are happy about it or sad about it or whatever you think about it, you wear the brand. And uh, people have an expectation that you will live up to their expectations of cooperatives. And uh, so they expect to be treated fair. And if the co-op or the credit union doesn't treat them fairly, they're much, much more upset than if uh, a bank didn't treat them fairly. And that's generally true. It's probably not always true in every instance, but that is generally true uh, no matter where you go. So there is a kind of an, uh, a, a perception of what cooperatives are and an expectation that they should be better. Uh, but you also wear the worst performance. Uh, so uh, in, in Nova Scotia some months ago, we had a housing co-op go bankrupt and leave a number of small contractors unpaid for some work. And uh, it was very interesting to see the fallout around that. There was a lot of publicity around that, much more publicity than I, I think that if it had been a, a, a social housing uh, unit or or a private landlord. Um, uh, people were more uh, upset about it. And of course, the conclusion that people reach when you have a cooperative failure is cooperatives don't work. Uh, when a s private sector business fails, they say, ah, the miracle of the marketplace, weeding out the weak ones. So uh, the co-op brand is something that uh, cooperatives wear, uh, performance good or performance bad. And the expectations are there. And the expectations come uh, around the, the, the following things. These are the pieces that make up our identity. Uh, and the first, which is not often talked about, but which I think is, is vitally important, is the purpose of the business is fundamentally different. The purpose of the business is to meet member and community need, uh, as opposed to maximizing the return to shareholders. And, and that's a fundamental difference that gives us, it's, it's the biggest single root of our advantage, and it's, it's the area where no one will copy us. They can pretend to copy us and values and principles, or most of them, but they will not copy us on the purpose. Uh, and it is that combination of the purpose and the stated cop values and principles, which, like Gerard, I will not go into in detail. You, uh, I'm sure you all know them. That produce uh, or ought to produce trust, and trust is, to me, the heart of the co-op brand that ought to be behind that co-op identity. Uh, that's what it ought to mean. But it is only there if we deliver. Uh, if we don't deliver on the purpose, and the, if we don't meet member need, the community need, if our values are not up to what we say they should be, or say they have people expect them to be, and if we don't follow the co-op principles, we do not generate that trust. So let me just talk about uh, quickly about uh, several examples of cooperatives that have done wonderful things, amazing things on trust. Uh, we talk about Co-op Italia. Co-op Italia very early in the, in the 1980s decided that they did not want to sell beef in their stores that were fed chicken feathers. Uh, or other animal byproducts. 
And uh, they took this as a principled stand that was related to ethics and the environment. They just said, look, that's not what people want. Uh, when the mad cow disease uh, swept uh, Europe, uh, Co-op Italia suddenly saw its meat sales and with it all of their grocery sales increase markedly because people knew this was a brand they could trust. They knew they could trust Co-op Italia to give them uh, meat that was fed as meat ought to be fed and therefore not contaminated. Um, Another one closer to home for me, well, it's not all that close to home, it's almost as far away from Nova Scotia as Van City Credit Union. And uh, many of us have watched Van City Credit Union over the years. Uh, no, none of us would claim that it's perfect, but is it good? Uh, and uh, this is one of their latest efforts. Uh, good money works in your account and your neighborhood. And, uh, it's, it's that combination uh, that, that is uh, very attractive. But Van City was active in environmental works and community works. They put their, they put their new office building and they built it in a section of Vancouver that needed urban renewal. And, uh, and uh, they, they took the chance in doing that when nobody else was doing it. So this is, uh, again, a, a cooperative business that generates trust. Uh, I have always been struck by the food cooperatives in the United States and uh, what strikes me about them, uh, they, they, they come in, in, you know, some of them are better than others, but they all share, uh, just about all of them, the following uh, points that fit together very nicely if you think about it, with the cooperative values and principles. They champion, they're champions of cooperation, they're champions of environmental responsibility, they're champions of local food, they're champions of healthy food, why would they want to sell their members food that will make those sick, uh, they're champions of fair trade, and many of them are champions of worker engagement. That's a pretty formidable uh, display of the cooperative values, principles, and purpose, uh, in, in, and it's shared among a lot of food co-ops in the U.S. So you've got one uh, minute left. Okay, and we're very close to the end. So uh, the risk: uh, there's one brand uh, with a hundred million people working in it, many, many actors, and how do you control the quality of the brand, knowing? that every really bad performance is liable to be high profile and damaging. Uh, so you don't control, uh, no co-op can control totally how its brand is perceived. The promise is that you follow the brand and if you live up to it, you generate trust, you increase your level of trust, you increase your share of the economy. And for me, this is the beauty of it you produce a much better world. So the question is, as I watch this new mark, will cooperatives around the world have the will and determination to enforce some kind of brand standards? And, uh, and I think that's a, a tough question. Uh, imagine a large co-op uh, doing something that very, very uncooperative, and will they be challenged on whether or not they're damaging the brand? Okay, Erin? Okay, thanks, Tom. Uh, we've got lots of questions coming in. Uh, Tom, when you, uh, when you started bringing up some of those good points, I had people around the room here at CCA with their thumbs up. So. Um, I think you're you're speaking to uh, some some listening ears here. So I uh, getting a bit of feedback. Maybe I can get uh, our speakers to mute for a moment, <clears throat> so we can uh, we'll we'll call on you. We've got several questions that have come in, 
and, uh, and, and also we have a poll to run. So since we had this question about, um, in, in the title of our webinar, about does the co-op brand attract people, we know we have a certain captive audience on the line, but let's try to be brutally honest. Uh, I'm going to start a poll, and so you'll see a poll pop up, and I'm going to launch it right now. So there should be a poll that pops up, and you can go ahead and select your response. The question is, as a consumer, do you look for the co-op brand before making a decision? So right now, of course, the mark isn't um, as widespread as we know it will be within a couple of years, but do you look to see that you're buying a co-op product? Do you kind of know the co-op products that are selling the things that you're looking to buy, and does that matter when you're making your decision? So you can select one of the one of the responses there. Everyone take a moment, please, to do that. Yeah, so you should be able to, um, to see it there. I'll report back the stats as well. We'll just give people another moment uh, to complete. Okay, so this is where we land. So the largest response is 56% of folks say, if I notice it, it's more enticing. So as a consumer, if I notice that it's a co-op um, that's produced the product, then um, more than 50% of us here on the call today say, uh, yes, um, it is more enticing. It does grab my attention if I notice, but not necessarily that I'm looking for it. Um, so moving from um, top to bottom, so 15% of folks that are on the line, so folks that in some way are connected to the co-op movement already is just how, why they heard of this webinar, 15% uh, of people said, I always look for that. That always matters. 11% of people said often. 11% of people said, no, it's not really on my radar. And 7% of people here today, and we've got, uh, we've got about 40 people still on the call right now, 7% um, of those folks say it's not important when I shop. So thanks, everyone, for your honesty. Uh, we've never actually run a poll before, so it's good to see that it works. Um, and, uh, and, and that's one way of saying, OK, so obviously this can insert into our conversation here that it does matter, um, and that the mark and, and even something like the certification could have a real impact uh, for consumers, especially those that are already aware of, of cooperatives and what that stands for. And I think with that, I'd like to start with a question that came in from Kevin Morris. Um, and this is to Tom saying, is the renouncing of the co-op name in credit union branding a result of neoliberal norms seeping into co-op institutional workforce? And one second, there was a second part to that question. Um, Just one second, Kevin. While you're looking for that part, let me just respond okay, to that. Okay, go for it. I don't think that the credit union naming uh, came about as a result of that. I think it it came about um, more, you know, many, many years ago. Uh, and it came about because many credit unions were started in churches and workplaces. And uh, the idea was that people got together because they couldn't get credit anywhere else. And uh, so they got together and they formed their own uh, organization so that they would have access to credit. Uh, and and credit union uh, was, I'm not quite sure why credit union was the name that it came out of that, but it was. And the same as in, in Quebec, they're not, uh, it's called Caisse Populaire or, you know, People's People's Bank uh, or People's Savings Bond. So uh, the second part of the question. Sure, Tom. So the second part is asking: Do we think that the mark, the certification, that kind of co-op identity, um, will that? Uh, will, do we think that that will help grow a stronger, high? Um, Will, will that help us hire highly skilled people? Will that help, help us differentiate cooperatives? Um, well, for folks that are, tra especially for folks that are trained in a certain way, like folks that have, say, training from St. Mary's or community economic development programs and that kind of thing. Does this differentiate, differentiation matter for those aspects as well? 
I, I think it will certainly help differentiate. Uh, most of the polls that have been done in the English-speaking world, which are really the ones, uh, the only ones I'm really familiar with, uh, uh, are, are you know people do uh, a significant percentage of people do uh, have a positive response to cooperatives and to a cooperative product. Uh, and, and the varied reasons behind that, but they do have a positive response. So I think it will, but again, I would come back and say it depends on us, doesn't it? If we allow that mark uh, to uh, lose trust, then no, it won't help us much. Uh, it will help us to the extent that we live up to the values and principles. And to the extent that we don't, it can actually hurt. Absolutely. Thank you, Tom. And thanks to Kevin for your question. I'll jump over now a question for Sean. So this is from Joel Stoddard of CareForce Home Care Worker Co-op in Nova Scotia. And he asked Sean, he says, great presentation. And he says, the brand identity and logo and the underlying messages are spot on, but with little understanding among the public about the underlying messages, how do we get those messages across? Wow. Um, well, of course, you know, as we've heard, we have hundreds of hundreds of thousands of enterprises, um, all of which express their cooperative identity and express their values in different ways. And some of them keep their keep keep their cooperativeness, hide it under a bushel, and some proclaim it very loudly. But I think that um, I mean there are the, the I've said there are certain key messages that people can use, can integrate with the mark, and they can place it in a number of contexts in their communications. There's also an ability or a facility for people to write their own messages uh, alongside the mark so that people can express in their own way and their own language what's important uh, about uh, the, the, co the cooperative social brand in their context and, and in their country. Um, but uh, the, the, in, in many ways, I think the, the cooperative values and principles are, are a, a very, they're an incredibly powerful set of messages, but they're not easy to get across in sound bites, especially in fast-moving consumer environments. So it has to be very tactical. Um, and, um, but I think that, you know, although I, I completely agree with Tom that, you know, there's the question of, you know, there are many players, and there are some of them are better than others. What we're proclaiming here is identity. So we're saying that we are something, um, and we are together. So it's a symbol of it's a symbol of unity. And I think I think just the fact that people are presented with this idea of that there is that that, that all these hundreds of thousands of, of, of businesses and these hundreds of millions of people um, align with a shared goal and shared values starts to open up immediately um, conversations in the same way that the dot co-op uh, top level domain does. If I send, a, if I send a, an email, frequently somebody says to me, well, so somebody says, what's your email address? So it's dot co-op and they say, what does that mean? And, and, and it's an opening for a conversation about, um, about the values and the messages and what we stand for and what we do and why we're different. And I hope that the mark will work in the same way. If, it's, if people use it and put it in places, then it opens up conversations. It opens up possibilities to qualify what we mean by this and to explain it sensitively in context. That's my best answer Thank to that you. one. That's great. We did have another comment coming in um, in regards to the, what you were responding to, Tom, as well, um, saying that the Ontario Credit Union System right now is undertaking a a branding campaign about cooperative banking, so they are bringing it back into their brand. But it, it's true, especially in credit unions, it's not as in the forefront as we maybe would hope it would be. Um, we also did get a question, and maybe this will be our, our last question around, uh, we'll, we'll do this one to Gerard. So this is from Nicola Huckerby, and the question is, Gerard, what do you think, um, the, how, how do you think this tool might work um, the accredit with the accreditation process for the global co-op mark. So because um, 
as you, I've got it up on the screen there now because there's this accreditation program for the global co-op mark as well as, of course, to get a co-op domain as well. How do you think your accreditation program would tie into those other processes? And keep it, we just have about a minute left, so keep it brief, please. Yeah, I think that the, because we decided as, as a cooperative movement to, uh, to implement a, 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 an international core branding, I think it uh, it stresses the the importance of a, of a, of a, a strong branding for for the co-ops. So uh, to go forward with uh, what uh, Tom said earlier, that the trust is uh, we, that we have to deliver if we want to to keep the the, the positive response that the, the the people in general have to to the co-op model. I think that uh, to to make sure that we go on delivering this, uh, the, 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 this, this trust, uh, certification could, uh, could help because the, the co-op will have, uh, w the, the, the practices within the co-op will be closer to the, the, the co-op principle. Thank you very much. Um, and, and thanks to all of our presenters today. We, we have a number of other questions that have uh, that have come in, but I think um, one that is of relevance to everyone certainly is around, um, are there lots of papers that show that consumers and, and folks out there making consumer decisions are actually attracted to the co-op brand? So what kind of research is there to say that, that having this brand there will, will attract people and that people have a positive orientation towards the brand. I mean, I know I can just say briefly that um, CCA did, uh, has recently done some public opinion surveys, and although we were disappointed that more people don't know about co-ops right from the get-go, once we tell them about it, um, or, or even if we say, you know, do you have a good orientation towards the co-ops, then generally people's feelings and opinions are pretty good about co-ops, even if they don't necessarily know all the different co-ops. Um, to any of the three speakers, do we know of other research out there that, that can showcase this? Uh, yes, in the UK there are, Cooperatives UK regularly or periodically uh, does some um, opinion research through um, Centre for, uh, for Brand Analysis, which consistently shows that uh, cooperatives are more highly, much more highly trusted than uh, shareholder-owned businesses. Um, when when they're asked the question in that way, of course. So I, I haven't got the figures at my fingertips, but it's something like 23%, I think particularly in relation to banking, funnily enough, where we've had a disaster in the UK, but nevertheless, it was a, it, a really, really marked uh, elevation of consumer trust in the cooperative brand, in the sense, uh, in, in the sense that that's asked. Whether that translates, how that translates in terms of um, Purchasing, purchasing preferences and choices isn't as clear, but, um, but that does go on in the UK and it is available from Corporatives UK. There's a lot, uh, Aaron, of research that's been done in Canada by various co-ops. I know when I was at Co-op Atlantic, we, we did uh, surveys about every year, every second year, and we, where we probed these questions. The NCBA in the United States has done a lot of research, uh, a number of waves of surveys over the years, uh, over maybe 20 years. Uh, uh, so there's a lot of research out there, and, it, and it, as I said at the beginning of our presentation, it basically shows the same thing. Uh, people like co-ops. They don't have a deep understanding of what co-op means. Uh, and, uh, but they, they have an expectation that co-ops somehow will treat them better. Thanks very much to all of you. So we are at time, so I want to graciously thank all of the presenters who did a phenomenal job. Um, thank you to all of the people who joined and submitted questions. And, uh, and because this is so popular, we probably will add another one um, to our series on this theme because there's, there's so much discussion that we still want to have. So thank you, everyone. Please do uh, visit us at our website at cooperativedifference.coop. Find out about our upcoming webinars and ways that you can tap in and, and, and learn about our research as well. We've just put out a newsletter. You can access that from the front of our, our page as well to find out about the different projects that we have undergoing right now. So, uh, so everyone take care, have a great day. Uh, hopefully you'll go back to your, uh, your management tables, your board tables, your lunchrooms, 
and, uh, and you'll think about how it is that you want to work with the co-op brand um, in the work that you're doing. Thank you.